first of all, what's the evidence that suggests that women are, in fact, choosier when it comes to sexual partners than men? And how much choosier are they? Uh, now, we know from our reproductive biology that women have that nine-month pregnancy, which is uh, obligatory. So women can't say, look, I'm, I'm really busy with my career. I really only want to put in three months. This is part of our reproductive biology uh, to produce one child. And men can produce that same child through one act of sex. Uh, so women, when it comes to sex, the choosier sex, the higher investing sex, in part because the costs of making a bad mating decision are much more severe for women than for men. Man and woman hook up, have sex for one night in the morning. They both realize, oh, this is a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Well, if the woman gets pregnant, then she might be pregnant with a guy who is not going to invest in her offspring. A guy perhaps has a poor genetic material. It does not have a robust immune system, etc. You asked about the evidence for females being choosier, and they are choosier primarily in the context of casual sex or short-term sex. So that's where you find the big sex differences. And so men have a much greater desire for meaning a variety of sex partners. I'll, I'll just give you one experiment. This is a classic study done by Elaine Hatfield and Russell Clark, where they had male and female confederates, which for listeners are members of the experimental team. It doesn't mean people from the South United States, <laughs> but they had male and female confederates simply walk up to members of the opposite sex on a college campus and say, hi, I've been noticing you around campus lately. I find you very attractive. Would you, and they asked them one of three questions, would you go on a date with me tonight? Would you come back to my apartment with me? Would you have sex with me? And it was a between groups design. So they simply recorded the percentage of individuals who agreed to these three different requests. And of the women, about half, about a little over 50% agreed to go out on a date with the guy. Uh, Six percent agreed to go back to his apartment. Zero percent agreed to have sex with him. Most women need a little more information uh, about the guy before they're willing to have sex. Uh, of the men approach, also about 50 by the female confederate, about 50 percent agreed to go out on the date. Sixty nine percent agreed to go back to her apartment and 75 percent agreed to have sex with her. And so if you talk about choosiness, are you willing to have sex with a total stranger who you've met for 30 seconds? Women unwilling to, and in general, uh, men very willing to. And this is a study that's been replicated now in several European studies. Very difficult to do this, as you might imagine, to get this by the IRBs or ethics committees in, in the United States anyway. It, it's been replicated in several Western Euro European countries. And you can get women off of the zero percent you can get a few percent of the women saying yes if the guy's really, really charming. You know, if he's a uh, Brad Pitt or, or I don't know what the modern equivalent is, Ryan Gosling or, or perhaps a famous rock star. So, but that's one illustration of the answer to your question about, well, what is the evidence for female choosiness? Here's, I'll give you one more. So there are studies that ask, what is the minimum percentile of intelligence that you would accept in a potential partner? You know, we explain percentiles to people so they understand 99th percentile, first percentile, 50th, and so forth. And basically, for things like a marriage partner, uh, men and women are roughly equal. They both are very exact. And they say what well, they want, like, say, 65th to 70th percentile in intelligence. Uh, where the sex difference comes up is just a sex partner, a pure sex partner with no investment. Women still maintain they still want, let's say, 60th or 60 plus percentile in intelligence, whereas men drop, you know, to embarrassing levels. That doesn't really, it becomes irrelevant. The 35th, 40th percentile men go, you know, if she can mumble a little bit, that's fine, or, or even not. That's another indication of female choosiness, that, that is they maintain greater choosiness when it comes to short-term sex and are simply less comfortable with having sex with total strangers or casual sex. And here's, I'll give you one more now that I'm rambling on and then I'll get to some other uh, interesting issues is this is an item on the sociosexuality inventory that colleagues uh, Steve Yangestead and Jeff Simpson developed a, a long time ago. But one of the items is, that's an attitude item and it says sex without love is okay. Do you agree with that or disagree with that? And there you get a large sex difference. So in the seven point scale where four is the midpoint, 
uh, men average about 5.5. So they say, yeah, sex without love, yeah, yeah that's okay. Uh, women are, are about 3.5, okay? They're below the, uh, that midpoint. It's another indication um, of this sex difference in, in choosiness.